What's up guys, Mikey Marketing Techie here with some tips and tricks for Google Chrome's developer tools. I have been a pretty big fan of browser developer tools ever since I can remember. In fact, one of the very first couple of websites I built almost entirely using Netscape Composer. Um, which was Netscape's own essentially developer tool that came as part of the Netscape suite. And I, I used all of those programs. I used them for my email client and I used the browser and I used Composer to build and create uh, some of my very first websites many, many, many years ago. As such, I actively use Google Chrome's developer tools and I use the Firefox developer version browser and I make use of all of those different things and they all play various different roles in my day-to-day -day life. In fact, it's because I was playing around with Chrome's developer tools that I was able to put together the Instagram videos that show how you can go ahead and upload a photo and create an Instagram post with most of the filter features and everything else as you would off of your mobile app making use of Chrome's developer tools features. Um, I later found out a way that you can do that using Firefox as well. And the instructions for that will be in the comments of that video. And if you're curious about it, I will link to it in the description of this video and up in a card thing up above so you can check that out if you'd like. But in this video, I wanna focus on three tricks that I use on an almost daily basis that makes my life as a webmaster a hell of a lot easier. One of the most common things that I find myself having to do a lot of the time is make updates to various different websites. And a lot of these updates you'd like to see visually before you go ahead and push them live. You wanna make sure that the code you're going to use or you were thinking about using is going to be perfect and ideal. Sometimes you just wanna make a couple of quick tweaks and just see what things would look like if you were to go ahead and do them. And if you're not running a separate staging version of your website, that could be a little bit annoying to accomplish. So, three tricks in this video that I promise you will make your life a bit easier. But before we go back there to the computer and start taking a look at all of these different tricks, what I wanna do is give a huge thank you to all of you guys for the awesome support you've shown over the course of the last few videos. We've gained a ton of new subscribers to the channel. We're getting a lot of people asking questions and a lot of people saying thank you for the Instagram tricks that they have learned. And I'm extremely excited that I'm able to get all of these videos out there that are actually helping people and I'm getting your feedback on it, that it's helping you and you're thankful for it. And that's awesome. That's the most that I could possibly ever ask for. So welcome to all of the new guys. Welcome to all of the new subscribers and thank you all for the support you've shown on the last few videos. So with that said, let's go back there. Let's go to the computer. Let me show you these tricks. So let's pretend for the duration of this video that this is our website. It's live, it's on the internet, we've had it up for a while, it's got an actual domain name, um, you know, and it's up and it's there. Uh, the, what this actually is is a template that I picked up off of oswd.org, which lists a bunch of simple and straightforward HTML and CSS3 based designs uh, that you can download and use for whatever you wish. So I picked it up off of there and here we are. If you're curious, I will leave a link down below to the actual template. But for the fun part, let's go ahead and start off by opening up Chrome's developer tools. So you can either hit F12 as a shortcut or go up over here into the menu bar, go to more tools and click down there to open up um, your Chrome's developer tools. You can also right click almost anywhere in the website to load up the inspect element and then that'll open up the elements tab. But we want the console tab. So hop on over there. And now things get interesting. Now what we're going to do is type in a very simple quick line, a very short command that's going to allow us to actually edit most of the text and the text boxes and the text areas on our website in real time. So document.body.content editable is set equal to true. And when we go ahead and do this, our website area becomes kind of a live text editor. Uh, we can select different parts and we can delete them and we can retype them. Sometimes things act up a little bit like that and you just have to kind of like type before the end, before the last word, uh, before the last letter and then everything comes out great. It's not perfect, but there is just a lot of different things that you can do and test. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and remove certain sections, select a bunch of things, delete them, it'll automatically shorten the whole page. And it also has a lot of kind of built in core shortcuts that it doesn't even mention. For example, you want to make something bold, control B when you have it selected and it's bold. You want to go ahead and make something underlined, control U while it's selecting, and that'll go ahead and underline. And italic, you guessed it, control I, just like everything else. 
You can even go ahead and paste images that you found from almost anywhere on the internet right into your page. So if I wanted to go ahead and find some sort of cool, better than this, uh, image of PHP that I wanted to go ahead and paste over on that page, we'll just go search for it, copy the image right off of Google Images, for example, go into back to our website with content editable turned on, and go ahead and paste that where we would like it to be. Now, sometimes you might have to do some further edits with things, edits that you can't do with content editable turned on. So back into console and the same exact command you can access by just pressing up. It'll automatically input that command and we change true to false, turning off content editable mode. Now, we can go ahead and right click on the image or the element we need to fix, hit inspect, which will automatically open up back in developer tools, that element. We can go ahead and right click and do edit as HTML or just double click so you can edit the HTML to it. In this case, just add a width equals 100% and bam, we're ready to go. So that takes care of the first trick that I wanted to touch base on. And you actually got an additional bonus trick in there where we went ahead and showed that you can just inspect element on almost anything and edit the HTML code related to that element in essentially real time. Now, for trick number two, this is going to be a huge favorite of a lot of Sublime Text 3 guys, and it's multiple cursors. So if you have something that you wanna go ahead and change in several different places, Ideally, you should do it at the same exact time, right? So you don't have to make the same change over and over again. So if we go ahead and open up the HTML of the element where we wanna go ahead and make all of these changes, I can go ahead and hold down the control key while clicking in all of the different places that I would like my cursor to appear. And then all I gotta do is just start typing the code that I wanna add. And as soon as I click off of that element, it's updated live in real time across a bunch of different elements at the same time. And lastly is probably my favorite trick. Now, let's say that you've been working on a brand new design for your website. And, and this means that you're going to have a new style sheet for your website, probably changing the majority of the colors and so forth. So let's say that we're gonna take this website that's currently red and change the majority of the elements to green. You can go ahead and actually trial run this brand new style sheet without having to make it live on your website and without having to make a duplicate of your site and run the staging site or anything like that. Now, fair warning, this is going to require a little bit more than the one line of code that we've done in any one of these past tricks. And I'm do my best to try to include the entire code that you can utilize down in the description for this video. It is entirely JavaScript based, so if for some reason it doesn't embed down in there, I will put like a link to a text file or something or a code pen somewhere that you guys can go ahead and click to get that code. If none of that works, my contact info is in the description, shoot me a message and I will get it out to you. But it's fairly simple, and the only change that you have to make in this is right over here where we have the URL for the new CSS file that we wanna test and run. Go ahead change this to the CSS file that you want to trial run for your site. Make sure that it's uploaded ideally to the same exact place as your site is on already and hit enter. And there you go guys, three quick tricks that hopefully made your life a little bit simpler. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, give this video a like, leave a comment, ask a question if you'd like, all my contact info's down below. See you guys in the next video.